Hi. Good afternoon. Um, happy to talk to you all today. I'm from the, my name is Carl Medical, and I'm from the College of Health Sciences. Um, I'm going to give you a, a perception uh, from three angles. One is a naive <laughs> faculty member <laughs> and scholar. Uh, one is an administrator, and one is an editor. And, and so I have to confess here, uh, having gone to a Jesuit undergraduate institution, um, that when Adrian first asked me to talk, I thought it was more related to impact factors uh, <laughs> as my role as a journal editor. And um, I think he could sense my, my surprise on the phone, you know, after I said, certainly I'd be happy to, about a month or so ago when I actually started to look at this a little further and realized that I had no idea what this is about. So this has been a good, <laughs> a good learning experience for me for several aspects. So if you were looking for a, um, uh, someone who is an expert, I am not it. But what I can tell you is I found it very interesting because um, from all of these aspects as a faculty member, as a scholar, as someone who has several faculty underneath them, who teaches in a doctoral program and um, works as an editor, uh, it's all very relevant <clears throat> and they're all very similar conversations. So I think uh, I'm just going to present uh, sort of my views on this. But, you know, obviously if you, if you look in Wikimedia, Wikimedia, um, Altmetrics is data knowledge bases that refer to it, their article views, their downloads, uh, their mentions in social media. There are different ways of tracking what scholars do. Um, and I think there's some really cool things about it as I've looked into it further and I've sort of uh, uh, educated myself. And I think there are some, some things that we have to be really careful about in the same uh, parallels and analogies that you would make. Uh, for impact factors and editors. So one of those is transition for old dogs. Um, I don't blog. Um, I've seen a blog. And in fact, um, we have a blog in our rehab sciences doctoral program, and I use it as a repository um, for all the information that we gather about our students and faculty. I have a doctoral student who puts it on our blog, and it is an awesome way for me, if a student says, do you have this information? I say, yes, it was on the blog like a year ago, so just search it. And, and I, it's my way of sort of keeping a big folder of stuff. But it's not my way of sharing information uh, other than with our faculty. And um, I think, quite frankly, we may have had one comment or two comments in the five or six years I've had the blog, which I think was someone's baby picture that we put up with one of the doctoral students, and that was the most commented portion of it. Um, I can say I do have a Twitter account, and I have approximately 32 followers, um, which is probably uh, from a big Italian family, my aunts and mom, <laughs> and maybe my brother, who I don't even think he follows me. Um, I do do Facebook. I do LinkedIn. I used to consider myself technologically savvy, um, but I find myself more and more, probably the same as you all, inundated with emails, you know, 200 to 300 emails a day, and it's just... Wow, how do you keep up with everything? So that said, um, I do find much of this, um, these trends pretty cool, and, and I, I have some thoughts and some comments. Um, obviously, the most common metric for evaluating research impact has been the impact factor. Um, and if you think about it, it makes sense, right? It's the number of citations um, that an article gets over a two-year span. Um, and as a journal editor, it's something you keep an eye on. It's something my publisher keeps an eye on. It's a metric that you hope helps you understand if your journal is doing better, if you're getting more impact because more people are reading it and obviously more scholars are potentially using the data that's being produced. So most of you all are probably familiar with this, but it's the number of times that articles are published in a two-year span um, that were cited by articles in index journals divided by the total number of citable items. And that typically means the total number of articles. So there's some potential flaws there for those of you that this um, is new to. And those flaws are that it can be manipulated. So if you're a review journal and you do have a lot of review papers, review papers often get cited a lot because you've provided a lot of references. Um, so those journals, sometimes you'll find some review type journals have really high impact factors um, and it may not be because the information is, is that vital and that vibrant. In a journal like mine, which is relatively small, um, we publish uh, four times a year. 
uh, and you know between 10 to 15 articles per issue, that's not a lot of, 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 of papers coming out. So I'm always sort of behind when I look at some of the bigger journals that I'm compared to when we compare citation indexes. But it does make a difference, I mean, it does make sense if you say, okay, how many times are people reading these articles? Um, and then how many times do they think it's useful enough that they would actually cite it? Um, one of the pros of impact of, of you know, looking at citation indexes in, in the typical journal and editorial response is you're reviewed by your peers. That makes sense. Um, it's not perfect. There are a lot of issues I deal with as an editor as far as mediating um, and trying to find good reviews. I mean, quite frankly, there are often times people will submit a review and it's not very thorough. So you say, Ugh, what do I do? Um, do I go to another reviewer? So there's definitely pros and cons to the system. The one area, though, I think that's really important is you do find that you have individuals from a specialized area of study um, and that those that are referenced uh, more are considered more impactful. And that's going to sound familiar, I think, if you look at altmetrics. It's a very similar um, idea. Who gets cited more and what are the sites and how are those um, found throughout the, uh, in this case, the web. Cons, if you think of impact factors in the traditional way we look at research uh, impact, is the more prestigious most read journals are higher ranked. That makes sense. The challenge with that, having gone several times to the Council of Science Editors meeting, is that some of your most prestigious um, journals have a really, really nice budget. <laughs> so Nature and um, Cancer and uh, who is the uh, JAMA and the um, uh, American Red Cross, there was another one that was amazing, in the millions of dollars. In fact, before Altmetrics and before the web, I mean, this was years ago when I went, the, uh, it was, I sat there and I have uh, a graduate assistant who helps me and gets $1,000 from the UK. I get a very, very modest budget and we're a really small journal. And they have staff that anytime anything of significance came out would crank up their PR engines and fax machines at that time and get that information out to thousands of syndicates. So the cool thing about Altmetrics is it's going to create a more level playing field, I think, for smaller journals and smaller folks to get information out. It can be manipulated, obviously, by review papers, and the more money you have, uh, the more availability you have to resources and get information out and target your larger newspapers and target your larger media outlets. So of importance as an administrator, when you think of faculty or you think of there's several younger individuals in here, if you're thinking of, of um, the academy, is what do you do and how best do you help a young faculty member put their best foot forward or put the best picture out there as far as what uh, their expertise and impact is. And I think that's sort of the focus I've come from today as I've looked at some of this. Um, how do we combine all the various metrics that are available to present a faculty member's expertise? And I think typically it's dossiers. So someone would come forward, they'd put a dossier, they'd have all of their manuscripts listed in there, they might have representative samples of teaching. I think that's going to change uh, quite a bit in, in my lifetime, I think quite a bit in the next five or ten years. Uh, the one issue I have sometimes, if you think of um, uh, the potential for altmetrics, and it's, it's always an argument, I think, even for our, our traditional way of publishing, is the Journal of Non-Significant Results. So I'm hoping that if this is a journal that people I know all over the world have wanted to create and no one has been successful in it, is uh, from an altmetric standpoint, is that information going to be shared? And I think this would be a really nice benefit of some of these methods that are being talked about today. Because I know I have trouble and I know my students have trouble getting papers out there if you don't find a significant difference. And yet, you, someone else in someone else's lab, they may be replicating the same thing and none of us are sharing that information that a treatment didn't work. And in my case, it's rehabilitation. So if a rehabilitation didn't work or an outcome from an orthopedic surgeon was not as good, that information typically isn't shared. Um, and that's always a challenge, particularly if you have information that's contrary. I was at a meeting a few years ago and several physicians were presenting their data on patient outcomes from a cartilage repair procedure 
And they had these great outcomes. And it was this group from Italy. And they were treating and providing rehabilitation for an elite group of soccer players whose BMI was in the low 20s. My BMI is almost uh, on the side of being overweight. So at 5'11", 185, I have a BMI uh, slightly uh, more than I should. <laughs> I don't really feel like I'm overweight. The BMI, the folks in our studies, were 35s and 40s and 45s. They were your typical Kentuckians who have knee problems, grossly overweight. And we presented our results that were contrary to theirs, and it was really a difficult situation because it was like, this would never get published because people would look at this and go, well, of course it didn't work because you're putting it in the wrong patients. Mm -hmm. So that's one issue I think I have sometimes with, I hope that all metrics will provide that as a share of, opportunity to share. Temporal issues. One of the things is I sit and I look and think about tweets and I think about following bookmarks and I think about following um, all the things you're learning about today is what's the temporal factor of that? The, the positive of a journal impact is that you're going to see hopefully a rise over time if someone's uh, paper and the quality holds true. I don't know what that'll look like in the future. You know, whether you will can continue to have tweets or you'll continue to have interest or you'll continue to find um, references that are streaming on the web relative to a, a reference paper or an article. I think that will be interesting to examine as we uh, look at faculty dossiers in the future. Um, and obviously considerations and, and negatives of the typical uh, scientific process is uh, <coughs> typical considerations of the journal versus the content. So where did you publish versus what did you publish? And I think obviously Altmetrics provides an opportunity to level that playing field um, and that the information can be disseminated more broadly. Uh, peer review provides a basis for examination by experts in your field. I still think that's a real positive of the process that we have. So with the Altmetrics component, there's obviously that opportunity for, for peer review. Um, but one of the things that you often find out is that people sometimes are less likely to respond and comment if you know who they are. So the positive of the peer review process in some respects is that someone can be possibly more open. Um, and I can stand up here and we can, you know, I've had, been in journal editor meetings where we've had the opposite conversation, which is that people hide behind their anonymity uh, and probably are oftentimes more critical than they would be if they were looking at someone face to face. But I think Altmetrics provides that opportunity. This is the part that there's several aspects I think are I, I've tried to wrap my uh, hands around as I've read these topics and what is our electronic CV going to look like in the future? So if I'm uh, helping one of our younger faculty through the tenure promotion process, I can see that our dossiers are not going to look like they do anymore. And, and for those of you that have had the pleasure or displeasure of putting those things together, you know, UK has all the little lines you got to follow and you got to stuff everything in there and just make it exactly so. But one of the things that I think are, is really cool is that I'm assuming that dossiers are going to look like web pages in the future, that they will be live and they will be active and it will be here's what I teach, here's my publications, here's my um, teaching evaluations. And as you look through someone's publications, obviously you have links to their papers. Obviously, I'm assuming there'll be links to all these different sites that have um, uh, access to where your content has been hit on in the web and how it's been hit on. Um, your social links, your links to previous and current conversations, um, your links to all the companies that assess the metrics. Uh, and that is the part that I think has the potential to be very confusing. So as I've looked into this, and I see all these different mechanisms of assessing your alt metrics. I just, I'm not quite sure, I'm assuming some of these will fall by the wayside and you'll have one or two or three that end up being big players. Um, but that's one negative I see is I'm not quite sure how I would give someone advice right now, at least one of my doctoral students, that if they were going to work in this way, how best to organize this and which metric um, uh, engine, <laughs> search engine would be the best. The other issue I think you have to be careful of uh, is how are all these scores calculated? So I'm on research date, um, which is one of those sites that sort of finds you. <laughs> uh, and 
And ResearchGate, in essence, takes your publications, links you to other researchers, and they tout themselves as a site created by researchers for researchers. And they come up with a, an RG score. Well, I tried to figure out the RG score, and I have an RG score of, of 30.54, and I have no idea how to, that is calculated. I, I do from a general sense from reading their information, which is the number of papers and publications that I have that are listed, co-authors, number of times that people have linked to my site, this site, I guess, number of times that people have downloaded or viewed it, um, and then sort of the prestige of the people that I'm connected to. But to try to figure that out, I could not figure that out um, as far as specifically where they come up with the score. So one of the challenges I think we're going to have in the future is where do you put um, your confidence in some of these scores? Um, because I'm not quite sure how some of the scores are made. I think I've already said this, but I, I'm having a difficult time as I try to put, I'm definitely more pragmatic, so as I've worked through this, I thought, okay, what can I learn? How would I approach it as a faculty member? Um, how would I approach it teaching students that are in my doctoral program? And as an editor, how do I uh, think about this? And these are all different resources that Adrian has provided us um, as we prepared for this. And there are lots of different ways and a lot of different analytics that can look at your bookmarks and your tweets and your social media um, components. So from an editor standpoint, I've tried to give some consideration to, okay, how does this work? Is it going to be more important in some cases to go to the biggest journals with the highest impact factors because they might have the most money to get your information out more and help you tweet more? and you disseminate your information more? Or is it truly a ground swelling component where the masses are gonna find your information and you are gonna go viral, as they say? I don't know. But as a journal editor, particularly from a small journal, I have to think, okay, how would we do a better job of getting the information out? We can certainly share our table of contents via social media, which we do. We can email them out to interested um, faculty members and scholars and scientists in the country, which we do. Right now we're not tweeting, and I'm not tweeting. Um, and then the other component that I found really interesting and very compelling relative to altmetrics is this idea of being able to share data, because I think that is a really vibrant component of um, using the web interactively for science. I mean, there are a lot of data sets that I know myself and our students have gathered over the years that if someone wanted to share or wanted to combine, I think would be really cool and I think is, is very advantageous. I'm not sure what the role of the journal editor uh, is in this case relative to PR and relative to impact. And those are some considerations I think as we move forward and as I move forward, I have to give some thought to how best should we use some of these sites um, and how best should we get information out. <coughs> One of, the, um, one of the things I did the other day, just for curiosity, is I took a couple of uh, papers from students and I stuck them out there in tweets. So I tweeted my own papers out. And then went back and uh, used the altmetrics. So if you go to altmetrics, they have a bookmark tab, so that if you pull up the paper and click on altmetrics, it will actually calculate the number of times your information has been in social media and been tweeted and, what else, Adrian? Uh, tweeted, I think social media, and there might be one other thing. Well, it was interesting, from doing that, I gathered a few more tweets and a few more times that that article shows up on Altmetrics. So you have to think for a second, how best is that a useful tool if I'm an administrator? Is it the faculty member who has 2,000 friends on Facebook? Or that has the best connection to someone like John Calipari to send it off through his uh, big blue network on Facebook? And then you're going to get those retweets and tweets. Is it the use of your newspaper or local media? I don't know. I think there's, there's some parts of the, the metric as far as using it as an impact factor that I think is going to take some careful consideration. Um, to me, the bottom line is that we want to encourage researchers to tell their impact stories on their CVs using broad sources of data. 
And I think the next um, 10, 15, 20 years, tenure and promotion uh, committees are going to have an interesting time because you're going to have some traditional metrics. And then I think it can be very compelling if someone gets information out and it's shared really quickly um, uh, and in a broad fashion. So to me, what's interesting is the supplement of existing usage statistics to provide a broader range and interpretation of research output impact for the benefit authors and our faculty. And for someone who's in the medicine side or allied health side of the campus, um, that's really important. Getting rehab strategies out, getting the latest medical information out, having that be able to get picked up and used by a clinician as well as used by a patient is huge. And, and oftentimes, people who come through our clinics are just as informed as our clinicians because they have the availability of, of information on the web. Taking a couple seconds of thinking of students, um, we try to train them as scholars and teachers, certainly in the College of Health Sciences. Uh, we train them to disseminate research and use social media. Does that have to be one of our seminars? How do you use social media so that you can improve your CV? Uh, and is this going to be a good product of a department or college? I was trying to think from our college perspective, is that going to be what a technology IT person is going to help with? Are they going to be the persons involved with helping faculty get their information out? I don't know. Uh, and then who pays for such a service? Uh, Altmetrics is not uh, cheap from what I could gather, and it looks like they're mainly institutional rates and um, there are some researcher rates. Is that something that a faculty member would take on if they wanted to get their information out? It might be what we put in startup packages in the future. <laughs> uh, for me, having come from this with sort of open eyes, I don't necessarily see it as a controversy of impact factors in traditional versus new. I, I see it as a blending of both. Um, and I think the argument is not the use of metrics like journal impact factors nor their importance, because I do think they have some importance and I do think they do uh, help to tell a story. I look at more like a z-score. How can you compare different people, metrics, and scales uh, and put them on the same uh, playing field? So I think what's most important is how do you capture and paint a comprehensive picture of the dissemination of information <coughs> using all the technological tools that are available to us, as well as trying to take into consideration some way of uh, ascertaining what is most important or what is useful. Thank you.